What about now, Kevin? You hear me? Yeah, there we you got it. Uh, must have been, I don't know. Something with the, the last meeting. The way you know, this, this is this whole age, man. You know, it just it just makes me feel anxious most of the time. But you got to join. You got to do this. You know what I mean? When, when we start doing it, this, yeah. Is the thing happening or what? <laughs> are we on the Irish Italian era or what? Yes, we are. Finally. God, I couldn't believe it. it. Anyway, but I was trying to tell the audience that you're a lifetime member of the actor's studio, writer, singer, songwriter. Now, right. Music, before we get into acting, your music is... What genre is that? Is it blues or folk? It's kind of kind of blues folk, like Dylan Springsteen, you know, yeah. it's story. I mean, I got rock and roll, a lot of rock and roll, a lot of blues. But like protest songs, you know, like the, the folk along the folk lines, you know. Yeah. To some degree, but folk with the with the sense of with the with the little anger and a little social protest. What was um, that actor singer's name with the real the folk music? God, I can't remember. I know you because you your singing reminds me of him. He had that uh, voice. Uh, Joe Cocker. Uh, no, 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 no. It, 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 it'll come to me later, but he was Neil an actor. Huh? Neil Diamond. Oh, you, well. Uh, you, you wish. I wish I could. Do it. Yeah, I was say put you in this class. <laughs> uh, I, I I see his face. You even look a little, but like him a little bit too. Um, Hmm. Uh, anyway, we got we, now. Let's get let's talk about acting. You know, I tried to put it on Facebook and I put the thing up there, and some I don't know. There's someone wrong on that today too. Uh, what was I going to say? When did you acting. start acting? I started acting in. Uh, I did something in high school. I played sports, you know, and then uh, I went to college and I played football. And then I, I got cast in a play, and I, and I. Um, I liked the attention I was getting in the play more than I liked tackling guys and waking up with concussions, you know. But I, w I was afraid to commit to uh, acting. I was just a little afraid of the theater. and um, So I traveled the country. I went on the road and I traveled the country and I started doing these things I learned in acting class, with the monologues and on the road. I was doing street theater. So then I came back and I, and I got in the film Hair, you know, just stumbled upon it and Three days, I was jumping around. I was sleeping on a park bench, and the guy said, "You want to get paid?" I said, "Yeah." You know, I was just like wild, you know. And I met this guy. He was a little artist guy. He was a priest. I found out later, and I, and I met this girl, this ballet dancer at Grand Central. Went up to Poughkeepsie. I came down with her. She wouldn't let me in the house. Another day in Central Park, and then I found a place on Ninth Street, uh, on Avenue B. And I, did, when I was traveling, some guy said, "Bill Hickey studied with Bill Hickey." And I went over there, and I did something. Pilk, he said, you got it, kid. You got it. Yeah, you yeah. remind me of my Irish center, Raffaello. Yeah. Yeah, he was just, you know, Bill Hickey was great, man. HB Studios. Yeah, yeah so, so then I started taking classes, and, and Hickey allowed me to go for free. And so I was taking movement, and, you know, I was doing, like, these things in tights. And the director said, good, good, John. I said, yeah, the question is, can he act? Get out of the class. I'm going out with, my, with the tights on. He said, you have more talent than anybody in this class, but you're not using it. So then I got into play. I got into play um, at the performing garage. Then I did uh, Waiting. Then he wants the Bronx at 13th Street. I did play Hello out there. I did, and I started working. And I just I wanted to work as much as I could. So I worked and worked and worked. I did theater, theater. And then I did, you know, Bloxy Blues, the tour of Bloxy Blues. I did Orphans in a regional theater. I did some soaps and, you know, I did independent movies. And I started writing. Out of that came writing plays. So my first play was about a midget outside a whorehouse. Ladies, beautiful ladies. That's right. Nothing but the nude flesh, Jack. Stripped down to that bare essence of feminine charm. Girls, all kinds of girls. Ladies, beautiful ladies. So then the kid comes along and goes, short as you, not short as me. wise guy. Hey, right in the balls, a little midget is talking up to the kid. And I was living in a cold water flood on 42nd and 10th Avenue. And I was rehearsing actors on the roof, you know. And I did that play. And we got a great review. But I was, I was, I was about 140 pounds. And I was like a and, – and um, yeah, this Jewish girl I met, I, live, I, I moved from the cold water flood. Thank God. I was thinking about her the other day. She, um, she took me in, and I auditioned for the actor's studio. And I, I did a play um, – by Sam Shepard, Cowboy Mouth. 
and we did it. We did it. We we're doing a thing, and and you know, I I I I, I, I try to break him down and cry and going into the cry, and I said, "Scene." I went, "No!" And I I did this double backflip from here, and it, and, it, and I and I and I just and I walked out, and I just and I, Al Pacino was sitting there going, "All right, we got something going on here now. We're ready." So I, so I walked out of there, and they invited me in as a as a finalist. And um, <clears throat> you know, I I did I worked there, and I worked with Francis Fisher, and I you know, I met all the people, and I and I, and, and then I came back to audition as a member, and I wrote, I did a play that I wrote about two brothers, which Bill Hickey helped direct, and and um, I, then I came out here. I I done you know, I did a lot of music with CBGBs and the folk over in Greenwich Village. By Washington Square Park, I did music and started writing and acting, and I was doing stuff. And then, and then I went to, I came out to LA to do a play that I wrote, and uh, it, 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 the play got a great review and everything. But it, it was like my, my living situation was crazy. So I went back to New York, and I found I wound up homeless, you know, in my hometown, you know. Yeah. And I somehow I got out of that and got back, and I got a room and a place, and I stayed there, and I was fortunate I met this actor john ryan john p ryan and he really helped me just talking to me i would go over to his place and he would just talk and 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 i came out of that somehow by grace of god and i, I wrote a play for the actor's studio for children and then i um then i i auditioned i was helping people all the time i was about you know then they said what is this guy he keeps showing up and i helped this one guy in his pl play by john ford noonan called some men need help and I was just helping an actor, and Bill um, Mark Rydell came out and said, uh, "Who wrote that play?" And I said, uh, "You know, John Ford Noonan." And uh, Susan Pretz told me, "Do you hear you got you got you got uh, invited into the actor's studio, but you got to talk to Marty?" So I talked to Marty. Marty said, "You're very talented." But there was one moment you took that chair and you put it down. And I thought you were going to break it. I said, "Marty, I I did that exactly to the T." And he said, well, you know, you're a very talented guy. We welcome you to the actor's studio. I gave him a hug. And I started working at the actor's studio like like nobody's business. And, you know, I met Michael there, Michael J. Pollard, you know. and, and uh, We'll get into him later. Yeah, this was down the road. And and um, my first play, I wrote this one-person show called the KevinKellyShow.com about me alone in my apartment. I live in the Montecito. And with which a lot of actor studio people used to live in, and uh, Michael went on stage with me as I was doing the one person show. He just sat there like looking, and and um, so so you know I, I I did that play, and then I I wanted I I I shot a film in three days, and it's about this guy me who falls in love with this girl, and I, I I'm I'm talking to Michael about it all the time. What should I do, you know? And, and Michael comes in, he's looking, yeah, I don't know, you know, like, you know, I don't know what, so, and we, and I shot this and I got, I got to, I got to find um, a, somebody to edit it, you know, that's, I, I mean, you know, so it, it's called, Have You Seen Michael? And I wrote a song called Have You Seen Michael? I went to Michael's uh, uh, memorial, it was at the actor's um, house there, the motion picture home, and, um, I didn't know about that. I would have went. I yeah. I mean, I don't know. A lot of people, people didn't, didn't know about it. Yeah, I know. It wasn't. I did this funny thing. I was like, I was, I was. They said, anybody else want to share? I said, Michael, come on, come on. You said you wanted to speak at your funeral. Come on, will you come? come? So I go on stage, you know, and I'm going, come on, Michael, will you? Jesus, you just you you, you pissed me off. And then I started talking about him, and I sang this song, and um, there was this guy there. Um, uh, da uh, Daniel Selznick, who said, "Where have you been? You are a genius. You're you know you're a movie star." And I was going, "Yeah, yeah." So, but there, like a Rolling Stone was playing the whole time. Michael wanted that to happen, and um, you know, we we set him up in a good way. You know what I mean? It wasn't like, but it, it, pictures came up, and you know, he was such an incredible actor he 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 had what dogs and animals have you can't teach it man right it's, you know, it's and I, true. I i just thought he was he was the catch me out you know at, at the actor's studio he would do something and then the, this moderator would say so so what did you work on michael and he went he he, was, you know, he didn't know he know. never knew what he was working on he just he, i mean he did and actually he had a, he had a method to his madness but uh 
We we were like you know Mutt and Jeff, man. You know we we just hung out all the time. He, he had this waitress that he liked, and I would go to his diner, and then I I had a waitress I was in love with, and we'd stare at her, drink coffee, and you know we were two sh two schmoes, you know, no place to go, walking. <laughs> he would walk all over the place. He was like a Forrest Gump, you know. So I him many a time, man. Many a times we walked together. Yeah, I used to kid him a lot. Yeah, in Bonnie and Clyde. I, I used to ask him, why did you park the car? <laughs> you know, remember Barney Club, he's waiting outside right. the bank and he parked the car. I said, why did you park the car? <laughs> Instead of waiting outside the bank. And right. he didn't know how to drive. Michael oh, didn't know how to drive. I heard that, yeah. Yeah, he didn't know how to drive. He was, un he was unbelievable, Michael, one of a kind. Yeah. There'll never be another one. You know? No, he was, um, you, know, he, you know, he just was a, he just was a, very interesting fellow, you know what I mean? So was John Ford Noonan. John Ford Noonan, do you know him? Yes, uh, when he lived in Manhattan Plaza. Yeah. Well, Eileen Brennan made, made his play famous. Uh, a couple uh, white chicks sitting around? Yeah, because she did that originally. Mm -hmm. You know, and she really put him on the map with that. So. He, I used to go to the gym, and he'd be, like, you know, jogging in place with this kind of, like, outfit on, and big beard, and yeah. you'd always be, you know, I always see him. Running around town and shadow boxing and, and Jimmy Ray's. He, yeah. I think he was the first one to wear the hat backwards. Yeah. <laughs> he he had some trouble. He had some trouble though. You know, he was oh, yeah. he was wasn't he? Yeah. He wrote, a, he, wrote, he wrote a lot, that guy, you know. He wrote a lot of plays, man. Yeah, he was something else. John was something else. Yeah, he was a very um I wish I'd got to know him better, you know. I mean, I I was talking with the YMCA and um I just thought, you know, I thought his plays were so, like, natural, you know. And, well, they uh, were. I, I knew him from, you know, Jimmy Ray's in New York. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, when this all the actors hung out. I used to work at a, um, I worked there, like, three months as a busboy in Joe Allen's. Hey, Joe Allen. And, well, you know, I got that. We huh? painted Joe Allen's. Did you? If we had money, we would go to Joe Allen's. Otherwise, we'd run up a tab in Jimmy Ray's. Right. <laughs> you, know, you, could, you know, you could run a tab in Jimmy Ray's. Yeah. Yeah, but Joe Allen's was he had a few dollars you went there. Well, you know, I, I was a bus boy and I, I dropped all these glasses and they broke and I was like, you know, they say the Jewish people say when you break a glass, it's good luck. Uh huh. And and this woman was there saying, um, Are you okay? I said, Yeah, I'm okay. And she said, Are you an actor? I said, Yeah. And she said, My name's I forget her name. Um she was a big casting director. She said, um, Sylvia Fay and all that. I got an audition at Bloxy Blues to breaking the glasses, <laughs> you know, in the YMCA. Huh. And then I thought, so, so I, I had been doing so much theater, man. I could do anything. You know, I was like a wizard sort of. I mean, I mean, I was just doing different kinds of plays and avant-garde plays and natural plays and Shakespeare. So when I auditioned, I was do I did like so incredibly as a, as an actor. I, they, they said, is is he okay? He's like, he's amazing, but he's like a whirling dervish. But is he okay? Is he mentally stable? And I, and, and, and they, they called the public theater. They called uh, Bill so Hickey. Bad. They called uh, all these people. They said, Kevin Kelly's, you know, he's a, he's a brilliant actor. And I, so they, I got, I got cast in that. And I was understudying three characters. And this one guy sprained his ankle. And I learned the whole role that night. And I went, I, I did it the next day. And I was like half a, I was trying not to fall asleep. But it was one, one of my best performances, you know, ever. Because I was like really the soldier, you know what I mean? And um, I had I had this one moment in the play where the, he, the guy comes out of the whorehouse. And the actor who played it came out and and and, and he comes out limping. And then the, the guy said, so how was it in there? And he said, I couldn't get it up. It was like one one note. I came out like this. How, and he said, how was it out there? And I, how was it in there? I went, <laughs> I got like five laughs going up the stage, you know, because I was, I couldn't, I couldn't find the words, you know. And then at the end, I'm going off, and they're laughing, the whole audience is going crazy. And I, I turn and go, I couldn't get it up. <laughs> so, you know, that was, that was cool. And um, so anyway, you know. You're an instinct actor. Yeah, you know, uh, but you know, the, I what, yeah, I mean, I'm, I, I, you know, I like improvisation and all that, but doing a play is something that's something, uh, um, 
you know, you, you find out what works and, you know, it, there's something nice about doing it because you, like all these Zoom plays I did, I did another Zoom play before uh, Corona, A Corona by Barry, Barry Primus directed. And, um, y- you know, y- y- you do it once and boom, that's it. And you, you know, and I, I did mine in my kitchen. So, but I really, I got these characters, you know, and I was still working and doing all this work. Where, where's he coming from? And, and I don't know. Where, it, oh, his son is, he's got a son. Well, maybe the son is, uh, I'm divorced. I had that. But, you know, there's, I, and I did it, and I had my glasses on in the first scene, and I took them off. I said, no, I sh-, afterwards, I should have kept my glasses on the whole play. And I wanted to do it again, you know, because we rehearsed it. And the same thing with, with Barry's play. It was like, okay, that was one shot. You know what I mean? But what about another shot? Like theater, you get to, that's only the beginning of the process is the first, you know, performance that you give. And it's kind of like, you know, it's, it's like blue balls. You know what I mean? Like I want another shot at the title. You know what I mean? Charlie, I want it. I, I could have been somebody. I just needed more, but the zoom play is like, you know, a one shot deal, you know, but, um, you know, it was fun. I, 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 it was fun working with Barry um, you know, he's, he's, uh, he, he, ta- he, he, he speaks in the language of the method actor, you know, he, he was saying, you know, I would work on this and I would try to find some emotional recalls and, have, and you know, there's places here, you know, when, you know, when, when I, I was, uh, hurt or I hurt somebody and, uh, you know, we work, we work really slow and, we, you know, when, when then, you know, so it was, it was nice the way we worked and I came, I was at the, at the, you know, at a good place and in, in, when I did it and, and it all came together. So Barry said, you did such a great job. I and mean, Kevin, it was the best work I've seen you do. And I said, all I did, Barry, was connect the dots that you had kind of put out there. Do you know what I mean? And then it, it all happened when I, when I, you know, uh, allow, you know, you put, myself, put myself out there emotionally, all the work that we had done was there, you know, and, and that, you only get that when you do it. Because it's the rehearsals, I'm staggering around. I don't think I'm good enough. I hear I'm, I, the lines are not coming there, and you know. But then when you perform it, it's like, see you, see you later, mom and dad. I gotta go now. I gotta flop my wings and see if I'm gonna fly, you know. But it was fun, you know. It was. I I really enjoyed uh, doing the the play. I wish we could do it again. And somebody he, somebody was saying it might be a good film, and because it's a play about um, a, a guy and a girl and. and and the, and the guy leaves the girl because he can't commit. And then he comes back on line like you and me. And he's, he's saying, can I have another chance? You know what I mean? Please. And she's like, oh, I had enough for you. And, but, but then she comes back and I'm, I'm you know, saying, listen, can, 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 I come, can I come over and talk? You know? So the Zoom play is interesting because I'm doing it and I'm back here with something. Then I got to turn. Oh, look, the people coming. The, the Black Lives Matter is come on, you guys, you know, they come back and, you know, and you get up and you get something out of the refrigerator, you know, so you can go through all this behavior, but it's, it's Zoom behavior, you know, so, I, I, John, I get a whole new career as a Zoom actor, everybody wants to work with me, I'm like, you know, the biggest thing, you know. So good for you, good for you. Uh, yeah. Barry's been around a while, too. Yeah. You know, and he knows he's a good director. Yeah, I, 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 every time I work with him, I just... Um, uh, he's just, he's just right on, you know, just, uh, the, the, you know, Anthony Calderon, remember Anthony? Yes. Yeah, I worked, when he, he worked, and Kathy Leslie was another one. When I worked with them, I, I did kind of like performances. We, we got our book and two things at the Active Studio. And both of those directors, they were, they let me go, let me go, let me go, to the point where I was like a child and I was going, I don't know, can you, can you help me get, I don't know where I'm going now. And they would say, okay, but just go here and over there. And, you know, because they let me explore and explore and explore and explore and get it. And and then, you know, they just said, okay, come on over here. You know, they just gently directed me with Kazan did, you know, he would let the actors go, you know what I mean? And, and, you know, then he would put it together because he would let them find it, you know, and uh, I so much enjoyed working like that. It's, it's a little scary, but you know, it's, and, I, and I, I almost can't help but work like that. I, 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 the lines are the last thing I learn. And, you know, I, try, uh, I was talking to somebody about that. I said, don't worry about the lines, get the character. And, yeah. You know. Yeah. Find the, find where you are and ask yourself the questions. And, 
and then you know the character will come you know i was talking to somebody about i did play orphans and not catches play yeah yeah I, I i became good friends with lyle i went to thanksgiving at his place and he he came to see me play music not numerous times you know but it, it, i was talking about when i when, when i i lived i was living in new york and i got cast in orphans at a regional theater in, in richmond virginia and i sprained my ankle playing basketball before i went down there so I kept spraying, spraying in different parts of my body because I sprained the ankle. And I, I, I was totally lost in what we were doing. And the other actor and the director were getting along fabulously, you know? Uh -huh. And I didn't know what I was doing. But then I got, the, uh, one, one time I just said, when I said, so the guy goes, so what's your name? I went, Philip. And I got it just by, by the way that I said that word. And then when we performed it, I took off, you know what I mean? I was in a whole different, but I used to, I used to tape up my body, man. My whole, my, my whole body was like I limping almost. And then the play, I would go, and then the play was over, and I bandaged myself back up, and the knees, and the, and the ankles, and I tape myself up and go again because we did the play in the in the style of the Steppenwolf did it, you know. Um, but yeah, Lyle Kessler, what a great guy, you know. Mark Rydell and Marty Landau, you know. Mark cast me in James Dean. And uh, I was mechanic number three. And I, then I, I, when the reading, I said, yeah, and if James Dean dies, I'm playing his part. And, um, and, and Mar Marty's the one who helped me with the one person show. I did private moments. And that's how I created the whole aspect of being in my apartment and talking about, you know, my, my doubt of doing this whole thing as an, as an artist, you know, and then at the end I say, you know, geez, I, I mean, I've got, I got a gift and, you know, to blessing and, you know, and then I sing a song and go out, but, but all those guys, man, they, they helped me so much, you know, and, um, you know, I, I, I miss a lot of, a lot of the, the, the people there, you know, that have passed away and. Yeah, we lost a lot. Lost yeah, a lot of... you know, but um, they were, you know, it's great guys. And Marty Landa, Mark Waitell, they're, they're living these lives, but they take the time to come in and to share, you know, to do, it was just beautiful how they, um, how they gave of themselves, you know. It's true. And, uh, well, they were my 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 three judges with Marty Landau, Mark Rydell, and uh, Sidney Pollack. Oh, Sidney Pollack too, huh? When I did my final. Mm -hmm. so, you know, I I done, I've interviewed a lot of members, and there's one thing I forgot. I thought about it the other day, and what reminded me was, you know, I did Joanna Cassidy's final. We did uh, uh, Streetcar. When, when she became a member, you know how we sign in at, at the studio? Yeah. I remember the first time she was a member. I remember looking at Joanna Cassidy standing there and looking at the, the board. And she was looking, you know, getting ready to sign in. But she was standing there and I could tell that she had this, this moment going on where she was a member of at the actor's studio. Yeah. Finally. Yeah. And I've never and I've I thought about that. And I and I wondered if what that moment felt like for you the first time you realized you were a member of the actor's studio. Well, I'll tell you, you know, um I had done a lot of work as a finalist. You know, I, I got up a lot and I worked and I wrote a play for that they did as a, a children's play because the city of West Hollywood said, you got to do something because they, they got free rent at the actor studio, you know? Right. And um, so when I got in, they, they said I had to talk to Marty first. And Marty was saying, some of the people think that you're a loose cannon. And I went, me? <laughs> you know? And, um, and, and he hugged me and I, he said, you got a great talent, you know, and, and a blessing. So we're going to use it. I said, thanks, Marty. And I took the, I didn't have a car then. And I, my first song was in LA without a car, you know what I'm saying? And I got off at the bus station on Sunset Boulevard and I went into the church, the Catholic church there. And I just sat in the back and I started to weep. And part of the weeping was at first that people don't understand me because I'm Irish Italian, I'm from New York, I, and I, I let my feelings go when I, I challenge people. I'm, and people think I'm out of control. I, I know I'm completely in control of what I'm doing. But that it hurt me, you know, that some people might have thought that. Because, almost like Van Gogh. I wasn't saying I'm like Van Gogh, but 
we, Van Gogh's born in Saint Day. was, and people didn't understand him. They just thought he was a lunatic. He knew, he was involved in, in what he was doing in a deep way. And then I thought, um, you know, it's a real blessing that God gave me this talent. And I'm sitting in the church, and I started weeping. You know what I mean? It, so part of it was, you know, uh, it, you know, I, I was saying thank you, and the other part was going, they don't understand me, but it doesn't matter because I have this with you, God. You know, and so that's that's kind of that, that was a that was a that was a very beautiful moment that I had, you know, because it was important for me. It was important for me, I'm sure, like you, to get into the actor's studio. You know, and it's it's a real honor. You know, it's a, you hit it on the on the head. Yeah, it's the one place I found since we don't pay. I always felt equal with everybody there. Yeah. I never felt, you know, and I would see people, you know, Anthony Francioso or whatever, or Shelley Winters or whatever. Sure. I always felt equal. I never yeah. Felt less than. Yeah. I, I mean, Shelley, Shelley used to be at this one place. She, and she, every time I worked, it seemed like she was moderating. She said, there's the actor. And she turned me on to her agent, Jack Gilardi. And, you know, yeah. um, but the, you know the same thing with Bruno Kirby. He he did a reading with play at the major studio and had me come in as the the guy who kind of lights a fire in the during the play sort of you know the guy who's the, the bad guy or whatever and you know all all these great actors. Peggy McKay was a she pro is. she produced my uh, my first album Lost in the Cracks of the Modern World and um, she she was. She, she she let me coach her fifty dollars an hour. I was going, all I had to do was say, do it again and breathe this time, you know. So uh, th these were J Jerry O'Loughlin, my first car that I got. Yeah. Jerry O'Loughlin gave me, and, they, and the guy said, listen, don't worry about it. Somebody's going to give you a car. And Jerry said, you want my car? It was the old Toyota. And I said, oh, thank you, man. I, I got no car now. I got taking a bus and walking around like a schmuck, but now I got a car, you know. So although everybody, everybody there, you know, uh, helped me almost like a family, you know, okay. and uh, I want my, my whole thing was to go to, uh, you know, the YMCA and, um, you know, go to the actor studio and, you know, just work spiritually on myself. And uh, that that's how I came out of out of the woods from homelessness out here to kind of having a second life, if you will. You know what yeah. I mean? You know, it's kind of like everything was wiped out. Uh, you know, been running on, you know, <laughs> running on fumes for so long. It all hit me, and I was like, "Oh, I got to stop." But then I got back, you know, and I was, I was back in the ring, and I was acting and writing, and I had ten things going on. I was writing a screenplay, and I was, I was doing this other play, and I was re recording songs, and I was doing scenes, and you know, so and that's what I've been doing. I've been going from the the acting to the writing to the music to the right acting to the right but almost like going like that and, and I have my songs on the radio my plays have been done you know New York and Chicago and LA but you know I probably because I've done so many different things maybe I, I haven't focused on you know, just being an actor is enough you know and if you really want to succeed in being an actor you really have to there's a business side of it that you know I I probably go, ah, you know, I don't care about that, you know, and that that's and that that's you know that's a that's a character flaw in a way, but in some ways it's a choice, you know. I'd rather just keep, you know, doing what I'm doing. I'm like I'm writing a this whole book about that period when I went down and I came out of it, you know, and I'm we're going to this uh, you know writing group and so it's, it's exciting to go back into my life and look back at that place and where I grew up because it's, you know, it's, it's about, you know, just, just all that stuff, the, all the, 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 the past that we have, the, uh, you know, my, my, my years in New York and living in the cold water flat and, uh, growing up going all these things, traveling the country and, um, coming out to Los Angeles, you know, all the girls who broke my heart, you know, the, I get all this, you know, you look back on your life, you go, oh, that's a lot of stuff. That's a lot of material I can use now, you know? Well, it's like Marty Landau said to us one day, our pain is a gift to the actor. Yes. So I, so I got a lot of gifts, John. I know that. I was just <laughs> I know you do too. I'm thinking to myself. Yeah, no, you, know, you do too. You I know. a lot of, lot of gifts going on in there. Yeah. And I think the most good actors or creative actors it's that pain that we come from, you know? I yeah. Mean, when I look back at my life or whatever, we went to that, but because we're talking about you. Uh, 
it, you know, I mean, there's a lot. Yeah, I heard them stories too, but I never. That's all. That's you. I mean, if, if you got to be you. And I yeah. accepted you. And yeah. You tell it. You know, I always thought it was. Hey, listen, the guy is good. The guy, he's not afraid. Yeah. I found you to be afraid to do. And that's what this acting is about. It's not being afraid. Yeah, you got to get up okay. and get up and get up and get up. And you 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 learn acting from just doing play after play. We were lucky too, and it's and I was too. Because when we were as finalists, we were allowed to get up by ourselves. Yeah, the studio back then. Right. We can get up and work. Yeah, that, really? Hmm. Don't you remember that? I mean, I yeah. Finalists, I could get up. I worked on Gary Gilmore, and I did Alfari and all them things. I never forget when I was doing Alfari. Uh, Hildy Brooks was moderating. And you know how she feels about smoking. Right. Yeah. She stood out the door and the side door and, and moderated because I, I smoked on stage back then. She what a gift she is. I see uh, Netflix now. I watch Netflix and when they have the ratings, they put smoking up there. I don't understand what that means, but I always think of her. Yeah. <laughs> see, no you know, they smoking in the scene. She said something about me. She said, You are like a, a volcano underneath the ocean and i thought wow that was a beautiful because it was like i got this fire but then this water is able to receive and to you know there was something about that when she told me that because she was focusing in on my nature you know and and, and that was a beautiful observation that it she is. had it's like know, a contained fire in yeah the water. it's contained Right, contained with the water, you know, which yes. is about receiving, you know. Right. So many times at the actor's studio, like what they did with with me all the time, they would, they love when I put a sports jacket on because it would contain me, you know. Yeah. So the Catholic schoolboy would come out a little bit. If not, I was like, I'm all over the place, you know what I mean? I, 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 but the, with, the, with, the, with, the, with the with the with the with the suit on, I was like, I'm. Mm -hmm. You know, and I, that, so I, Mark Rydell said, you know, everything I've asked Kevin to do, he's done. And uh, so these were all good lessons. And um, it's funny, I've got to play with me with little glasses on and playing a nerdy guy. I'm almost more free in that role than I am because I'm just like a big fucking dog. Excuse me, oh, what's my language? I'm like a big dog here, you know what I mean? Like, a, you know, but I love to play character, find different things, you know. And That's the studio's for. Yeah, and uh, find them things. But in in so many times, in 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 people have written plays for me. Uh, Alan Bowne wrote plays. Shem Bitterman is a playwright that, and and I was flattered with that. But you know, it was I still have to find the character. You know, and and was somebody says you got to be yourself. I'm going, what's that? You know, but you know, I like the play I did with Barry, the uh, A Corona. You know, I define, I define that through myself, you know what I mean? Because I was going through all this stuff with in relationships and... You so, know, the you know, wind coming through your window. Oh, yeah? Sorry. It's just the audience. The Holy Spirit, John. It's the Holy Spirit, the Holy Ghost. I don't know about the Holy Spirit, but something's coming in your window. <laughs> Sorry about that. No, it's the, this way the, the audience doesn't get disturbed when they listen to you. Uh, no. That's really wonderful. I mean, I mean, it's... I mean, you really are one of those gifts from the actor's studio, and, you know, and is, I, my mind went somewhere else before I was thinking about, go on, Kevin, keep going, because you have a, so much energy in you. Yeah, you know. Uh, so many stories. Yeah. Um, just, uh, just, there's, I mean. <laughs> just so it's just hard to admit to, to go back to, but it's funny how um, going back and writing about when I was homeless and I was um, I was living in the woods and you know I, I, I never ate at a garbage cans, but I was you know bouncing around and um, to go back and to look at that and to write from that point of view, you know what I mean? I mean you you don't think people don't realize it's like a homeless guy wears a a jacket in the in the in the middle of the of summer, and they go, "Why is he wearing that jacket in the middle of summer?" Because the smell, his own scent that he has, he's protecting, you know. And he may, I may smell, you know, very uh, to you, and you might, might not forget. But but that's all I got left. That's all you got left for your self esteem is your own smell. And the one thing that's weird is, well, you don't have a key in your pocket. That's a that's a, it was an interesting. Uh, 
so you know, I, I was really out there, and um, um, I, that was the time that I said I it was the first time in my life I couldn't I couldn't create. You know what I mean? Because I was I was in such a dilemma, and I knew that I had to go back and to write about that, or to, to look to go in there, and to uh, because it, you know, on the grace of God. But I was like I, I was living in such a such a I was so vulnerable. You know what I mean? I mean, guys put knives in my throat and, you know, you're sleeping outside. It's like, you know, you're going through all your private stuff outside. Mm-hmm. And here I was living in the woods, like, you know, like a, and, the, and it, was, it was it was upstate New York. And the, the, you know, in the fall, and they were, the, the guys were going to shoot some deer and they were going, what is that? Can we shoot it? You know, I'm coming out with a beard, like looking like, like Richard III. And, um, <laughs> so, Writing about this is interesting, going back, writing about my home and my family, because, uh, you know, I, I, I went back and I stayed with them, and uh, it was just a lot of just, you know, very, uh, very, a very, very difficult time, but it's a time I came out of, and all the myths, you know, it talks about that, uh, the uh, myth of um, uh, Prometheus, but... Um, the resurrection is the, is the, is the myth in the, in Christianity, but uh, what's the one where the the, the bird dies and and it, it's res- it, it comes back to life again? Um, and it's just kind of like what, what what's happening there is you reach a point in your life where you have to change, you have to change your skin, you know, and and everything's got to go for you to step into a new. A person, you know, and and that, that's a very dangerous time because a lot of people lose it. You know, a lot of people, Jim Morrison and this one, and you know, uh, they they didn't they didn't get out of there. They didn't make it. You know what I mean? They got lost in the in in the in the reverie of what they were involved in. So I was kind of lucky in, in some ways when I think about it in hindsight that I had to go through that because I'm stubborn and I'm, you know, and I had to go through the physicalization of going that far down to strip me of the ego and all that stuff. And then to come out of it, you know, I was going, I'm holding on to this little room I got in Hollywood. You know I mean? I, you know, I, cause I was thinking about this little room when I was out there. And, um, uh, so that was a, that was a, that's the kind of a period now I'm looking at as a writer, you know, and, um, Oh, I, I wish I, I wish I could do more Zoom. We, you know, we'd be great for that place. I'm many help. You know, I worked on that. You know, to, I worked on both parts. What's that? There's some many help. Oh, oh, you know what we're talking about? We're talking about if we have some time. Michael Pollard. Oh, we did talk about him. So Let's talk about him some more. <laughs> it was something I was going. I was just going to. You know, you've done a lot, but it. it I, some actors are going to be watching this. Uh, what, what would you recommend to uh, new, the new actors out there? What would you, how would you, uh, what would you say to them coming up? What should they do? Well, I don't know if, if you know, it's just, for me, it was just getting up, getting up on the, getting up and, and, you know, exploring the process of being an actor, whether, you, you know, if you're doing a play, there's something, there's something about that that you have a certain time to catch it and go and directors and you're trying to find a process that's working in it. And, and then you find it opening night, you get to go someplace, you know, and because it's, it's, it's just you. It's the same thing with the studio is getting up and uh, like work, like Mark would have me to work on a guy with a suit. That was a, I had a different way of approaching things. And that helped me, you know, diff, different uh, experiences like that, where you're doing stuff, uh, whether it's on the stage or, or not. I don't know this, I guess the zoom is a big deal now, big but I still deal. think it's important to get together with, other people and um for me you know i'm a stage actor you know i, I haven't had like a, a movie career you and, went to uh, hb and not no yeah i i reckon i almost went there when i got out of sing sing uh, oh really yeah yeah they, but they sent me to terry schreiber because they figured, oh yeah terry schreiber don't you they figured it'd be one-on-one but i wish i would have went to, to you know there but her book Salome jens is the one that turned me on to a challenge for the actor and I always recommend that to actors to read. Who wrote that? Did did is Uta Hagen. Uta Hagen. Yes, I, I yes. yeah. The second book is mm-hmm. the best book on acting there is. And the other thing I, that I learned a long time ago, and I, and I I tell actors, in order to be a success, 
you have to be willing to fail. Yes. Mm -hmm. And today, I, I find most actors, in, in, especially in this country, America, are not willing to fail. They want to be movie stars more than they want to be actors. Yeah, I, I, yeah, I don't. I, 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 I can't understand it. You know, you, you. Uh, I can't understand it really. I mean, I, I, I always felt like you know when I, doing theater, I had, I, I had an opportunity to really. Uh, travel someplace where, and there was a process involved. Where, whereas you know, uh, the other thing is that you, you get a call and you got to play a detective. You shoot somebody and then you got to play a guy who gets shot. And you get you work on getting shot. That's about it. I mean, it's it's almost. And I'm not going to say anything about film acting because I love to do film and I've done films and you know, uh, leading roles and whole films, but it still feels like a little bit like modeling a little bit. Do you, do you know what I'm saying? Because it's yeah. you, you, you do three seconds of something, you know, and or the biggest scene you're going to have with another actor is about thirty seconds. You know, you, right. not, 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 nothing ever goes beyond that. So it's it's getting it's interesting finding that the moment of what's happening in those thirty seconds, but still, it's not the same thing as going into the ring. You know what I mean? There's going into the ring is you know when I, as an athlete, you know, uh, Janae said. Uh, uh, or, or toe, which well, I forget which one they said, you know, the actor is the athlete of the heart. It was such a beautiful way of putting it, you know, so if it, I, I don't know. I mean, uh, going after television and go, go, going that way is, uh, that's a, that's a whole choice to make. And, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't know if, if I had had success in that area of my life, I, maybe I'd just be doing that all the time. I wouldn't go back to. I wouldn't work on plays like I do. But I, but I'm out of the. I'm out of the theater. Like, me, uh, being an actor led to me being a playwright because I'd done so many plays, and then I was with that midget outside the whorehouse, and you know, and so theater was important. And and, and then out of that, my hand got cut, and I started playing music. And it be, the songwriter was because I was a playwright. I knew how to write a song, and study. You know Woody Guthrie, Bob Dylan, Bruce Springsteen, and so, it, it, so I, I was able to access the talent of being an actor, which I always was doing. You know, to being a playwright. So I've written a lot of plays, and I feel like uh, need some need rewriting. And you know, I've written a trilogy about my family, mm -hmm. um, and I, and then music came, which is a whole other gift that I was given. Um, you know, writing songs and, uh, but I, I feel like I'm going back and, and, you know, I'm, I'm writing, but I feel like I, I'd like to, I wish I could go back and, and do more acting. I don't know. You guess you can just do zoom now. I don't, I don't know, but I, I think it's, it's kind of, it's kind of interesting to, um, that, you know, this, because a lot of the acting now is going to be like, I mean, casting directors, you, you get on a screen, right? I mean, I don't know if people even meet anymore. Do they? Nobody meets anymore. I, I mean, you know, you, I, used have, I used to have pictures and resumes you used to give to the person, you know, you know, and you had to go into the room and audition. And uh, so many times I would go into a room and, and uh, I, you know, one time when I did uh, Orphans, I came in as a tough guy. And then the director said, try Philip. And I just crossed my legs and I looked at him and I had it. You know, he, Biloxi Blues was, all these plays that I did, like a cast in, was because I met the people there and they could see me in a way that because of the energy that I have, they could see me going here, going there, doing this. And I don't know if you can catch that here. I mean, no, no, I don't know about Zoom. I, I, I had a lot of the same experiences. I go in for one part and I get another part. Yeah. You know, the directors, yeah. they see something different. Because they got to smell you. I mean, a good yeah. director and is going to know. Yeah. I remember I went for a, uh, uh, Oh, great director. I forgot his name now. Uh, Extreme Prejudice was the name of the movie. Uh, I, uh, but anyway, uh, when I was walking out, he says to me, what's the best film on you? I said, probably the post office. You know? <laughs> 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 I, they, I got a call back, you know, for fun. <laughs> right, right, right. I mean, you don't get to do those, them things on tape. Right, right, right. You don't get right. to do that. Yeah. Uh, where you can, you know, they can see you. Right. And the other thing is, the, is the, you know, really knowing um, how to use this. And, you know, now people, you got an audition, you go here. 
You see, you got to get the Zoom correct to send the send the picture. You do a selfie audition. You send it to the casting director. You know, it's all compute. It's all it's all kind of a. And you have to. Yeah, if you want to you want to participate in the game, you have to play that way. You have to get involved with the way it's happening. You know, and I'm glad I, you know, brought I, that I kind up. Of shied away from that. I'm glad you brought that up because one of my uh, one of my ex agents, uh, Sharon DeBoer, when I was with Mikkel Jennings. There's a part in New York. She thought I'd be right for it, but I don't have a cell phone. I know, you know, I'm the, you know, I used to be an ex gangster, so I, I'm near phones. We never got along. Until <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this day, I still don't have a cell phone. I don't know. But I got to get. I'm, I'm looking at you with that hat, and I just kind of. I got. If I want to get back in the game, I got to get that thing. Yeah. You know what I mean? You got to. Well, I'm so glad you said that, Kevin. Well, you know, you listen. You you're doing great. I mean, getting this up today. I mean, oh, for, for the, the audience out there, I couldn't get. I was muted for like twenty minutes, and John was going, "What are, what are we doing? I can't hear you." And I'm going, "Oh shit, I got to go." So I, I, I got lucky, and I pushed one button, and got, my voice came back on. So the fact that you're doing this through Zoom means that you know you're not totally afraid of <coughs> working with the. No, I'm not afraid of it. Uh, but to get back in the game, I, I, I need to get a cell phone and start doing those things. You know, it's like many, many years ago, a quick story before we go off. Salome used to get all my money. I used to have all my checks made to Salome because I wouldn't, you know, I never had a bank account. And this and that. And she told me, when are you going to be legit? <laughs> so legit, you know. <laughs> it took me many, it's only I, about maybe a little over 10 years now that I've had a bank account. I never I always said my bank account was uh, you know my pocket. Right. Well, you know, you, you came, you came, you have a story, you know, it's different than mine, but you came to a point where, you know, you you died in a way, you know, I mean, or you, you know, and you and you come back from that. Yeah, well so, so you so your your journey is a journey of a hero, man. You know well, you may not see it, I may not see it for me, but uh, I can see that your life being a journey of the hero, and sometimes I can see my life being that. Uh, I stood up. You might say, you know, that I'm very well, proud. Of, I'm, I have no regrets of my background. Yeah. Uh, you know, I did. I did what I. I did what I did. And I stood up. I did my time. Right. You know what I mean? I, yeah. My name is still respected in neighborhoods. Yeah. You know, when I go out there, the, the name John John is still known, and it's respected. And I like that. You know. Yeah. You know, I told people many, many years ago when, you know, instead of picking up a script, I picked up the gun, <laughs> you know, which is true back in the, in the 60s. Well, what did uh, Al Capone said? Words are nice, but a gun and words are nicer. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. Listen, Kevin, this has been great. I don't want to go too much because I'm going to put this up on YouTube and Facebook. <clears throat> I, learned, I finally learned how to get, you know. Well, you know, it's funny. The whole time I'm doing this, I have a tooth is missing, so I was trying not to smile. You know what I mean? Which okay. is kind of interesting. Yeah. I, you know, just having a tooth in there, trying not to smile. I, I, I tell a quick story. I was doing a play at the Writers Guild of America, right? And I was playing a lawyer, like the guy from Nebraska, so I had these glasses on. And but when I was off stage in the second act, first act, I took a bite of an apple, and the tooth broke. So I, I had to put the tooth back in there, and and I, and I was trying to whole play. My whole intention was don't let the tooth come out because when I was in the first act, I was going blah 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 blah, blah and the tooth came out. And I, I I caught it and put it back in, you know. So it was interesting, you know, playing this kind of like a, a lawyer from the Midwest and you know just trying to keep the tooth in the mouth, you know. <laughs> anyway, well, on that note, on your tooth, I want to thank you, Kevin. It's really been a pleasure. What a I, I really enjoyed this. Uh, yeah, I love, you, really. John, you know, you're, you're, I love watching the studio, working on the O'Neill pieces and getting up there. I, I think it's I think it's great that you're doing this and you're helping other I, actors to be able to. Speaking of O'Neill, you know, when, when we spoke, Mark Rydell gave me the, the greatest compliment that I've had when, after I did Yui. He said, I love to work with you. You know, which coming yeah. from Mark Rydell. Sure. You know, yeah. Said, wow. Then I know my I'm doing something right. Yeah. I remember, uh, oh, David Patch. Remember David Patch? Right, David Patch. I one day he came up to me. He said, "I know you for years," and this he saw me doing you for the first time. He says, "Now I know why you're a member." Mm. And I thought, "Wow, that's really nice." 
David says something to me once. He said, uh, they, they said, so, you know, the scene was over. He said, uh, so uh, how are you working with Kevin? And, he, and I said, I just let him go. Because, yeah. you know, where he goes, he's going to wind up in the good place. I, I can't direct him. Which he was directing me. But, I mean, it was like he was cool enough to let to, to say, let, let his fire take him. Because, you know, he's going to get there, you know. Again, another a method director who's allowing the actor to discover where to go and then directing him at that that right time. Right time. You'd be great in that. I mean, Huey, that, uh, and the other, the, you know, that I just know you sit in a hotel lobby. It's just about as natural as you can do. You belong there like the, the chairs belong there. You know? Thank you, Kevin. I love, I saw what you did too. And I loved it. And I commented about how, how, uh, how special it was and how I really loved that, that you got up and did it and how, you had the communion between the, the actor and the self, you know, and, uh, you know, I appreciate your work, John. I appreciate yours, my friend. Thank you. Okay. I'll, I'll next compliment, I'll end this and put it up there. Thank you. Thank All you. All right, bye-bye. Stay well. We need you. <laughs>